Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is October 16th. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. I wanted to make this video to check in on the Bank of America wheel strategy that I opened a couple of months ago and give you an update and talk to you about a couple of different things that I've been thinking about. This is probably going to be a two-part video because today is expiration day and as you can see right here, Bank of America is currently trading at the $24 mark, <clears throat> which is totally fine because if you recall from the original video, I discussed how in the wheel strategy, you want to open positions like this on stocks that you would have no problem owning in your account. And I am completely comfortable with the idea of owning Bank of America as a stock. I wanted to point out that you do not have to let uh, this option get assigned if you don't want to. You can you can choose to roll it out in time if that is something that you want to do. I'm not going to do it for purposes of this video, but I wanted to point, just highlight something that I thought was really interesting when deciding what to do about that. So if I wanted to roll out this option right now, it has no extrinsic value. It, this is all intrinsic value based on the, the relation to the stock price. So if you roll this out in time, you can collect additional credit. So let's just say that we leave it at the 25 strike. If I rolled it out seven days, I could collect about $10 more, less, less fees. And the further out I go, of course, the more credit I collect. And so within the 30 to about 60 day range, I can collect anywhere between 62 and $103 in credit. Let's just say for sake of example that I select November 20th because that's 35 days away. I can get about $60 in credit over here, but I wanted to let you just highlight that I would get about the same amount of credit if I let the stock get assigned to me and I turned around and sold a covered call. So the trade-offs between rolling a naked put and selling a covered call are about the same. You would just be, take ownership of the stock. If you rolled it out, you would just avoid ownership for however much longer you decide that you want to do that. This gives Bank of America an opportunity to recover and potentially get up beyond 25 if you think that it has room to grow. Um, but that's just something I wanted to highlight today. Today's Friday, and so I'm not going to do anything with this, but if this is something that, you know, you're like, I don't know if I want to own this, maybe I do want to own it, it's kind of up to you. I would sort of evaluate some of the, the credit that you could collect on the on the rolled out puts versus the covered, the potential future covered calls. If I went to November 27th, I could collect about $65 in credit. It's a little bit more for a covered call, which, you know, always nice to have a few more bucks, but this this number might be different on Monday after the calls after the put is assigned to me. Same thing with December. If 63 days away, I could collect about $100 in credit. <clears throat> actually a little bit less in credit if you sold a covered call in December at the 25 strike. So these are certainly things to consider as you are evaluating whether or not to um, continue your wheel strategy as is. There's nothing wrong with rolling out naked puts. It's a totally fine thing to do. If you wanna get assigned, go for it. If you don't, roll it out. That's the way I, the way I look at it. But for purposes of this channel and in this video, I'm gonna let this get assigned. And so I'm gonna check back in on Monday and I'm going to talk about cost basis and what that means and then um, talk about my thought process as I decide which um, strike to pick for the next covered call. Okay, this is part two of this video. It is October 23rd, about 10, 19 Eastern Standard Time. My week got away from me. My day job has been much busier than it had been previously, and I apologize for the delay in time between the two videos, but this is kind of how it's going to turn out. So here we are. Bank of America was assigned to me at the 25 mark. And so I was debited $2,500 from my account. So now my total cash balance is $615.43. My buying power is um, $1,800. And currently Bank of America is trading at or, or around the 25 strike. When it was assigned to me, and earlier this week, Bank of America was between 24 and 24.50, and so at the time, I, it had been trading lower than the, the strike that I was assigned, which was not a problem. I had no, no issue with that. I expect Bank of America to kind of hover in this range of 24 to $26 for a little while, and so this is about where I want Bank of America to be, and so I briefly want to discuss cost basis, 
And this is um, a method for sort of just tracking your overall credit collected versus the strike, the stock price, and just kind of keeping an eye on, on where you are um, profitable versus potentially losing money. And so if you recall from a few videos ago, I sold a naked put at the 25 strike and I collected $150 in credit less $1.15 in fees. So I collected $148.85. Bank of America was assigned to me at the 25 strike. So that's $2,500 that was taken out of my account. So to determine cost basis, you take $2,500 minus the credit collected. In this case, that's $148.85. And the cost basis for this current trade right now is $2,351.15. And that means that as long as Bank of America stays above $2,351, this position is profitable. And so I can sell covered calls at any point above $2,350 and would still make money off of this trade. Of course, it's helpful to sell covered calls higher than the 25 strike because then you are more profitable, but keeping in mind the credit collected, what's going on, the potential for Bank of America to be trading in 24 range, 2450 range. You just want to keep in mind cost basis as you are evaluating your trades. And so that's what the current cost basis for this particular trade is. It's 2351.15. So let's take a look at the current uh, premium that is available for some of the um, covered calls that I'm going to uh, demonstrate now. Okay, so Bank of America has a pretty low ID rank right now, which generally means that the call premium that's going to be associated with it is not going to be that expensive for buyers, which also means that sellers are not going to be collecting as much credit when they um, open the trades, but that's okay. I mean, the point of this is the wheel strategy, which means you just continually turn the spokes on the wheel. And so um, let's take a look at what we've got available. So choosing an expiration on a covered call is totally up to you. Because you own the underlying stock, there are benefits to selling near-term calls so that you can just be more active in the position. But if you want to co collect more credit, of course, you can sell longer dated calls. And so with this strategy, I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea of selling a covered call 30 to 60 days away, just because I might want this to get called away from me sooner than um, originally intended. And so I am going to try to focus on something between maybe the 14th to the 28 day range, just because I'm, I want this to be a little bit more active and I don't want to hold on to Bank of America forever because I want to get the cash back into my account so that I can open other positions and other, um, other options positions. So let's just take a look at, uh, the 14 day range right now. So if I sold a covered call on Bank of America at the 25 strike, which is basically just the same amount that it was assigned to me for, I can collect $70 in credit. And that would reduce my cost basis. So that would be about 2,281.15. So I would still be profitable. Assuming Bank of America was called away from me at the 25 strike, I would make I would effectively be profitable by 218.85. If I want to sell at just slightly higher, or maybe potentially make a little bit more profit, I can go to 25.50. But look, I'm collecting $20 less credit. So there are trade-offs to selling at the 25 strike or selling at 25.50. As I've said before, I think Bank of America is going to be hanging around in these ranges, and it's much more likely to get called away from me at 25 than it is going to be 25.50. And so that is where I am in terms of my thought process. But if you're in a different stock and you think that that stock has a good possibility of continuing a run up, you might want to go a little bit higher. You might want to go maybe $1 higher so you can collect 100 bucks out of the, the profit margin. But because this is a pretty consistently, this is a pretty consistent stock that stays within our range. I don't see a benefit to doing that here. So this is November 6th. This is 14 days away. If I go to November 13th, which is 21 days away, I can collect about an extra $15. And 28 days away, I can collect an extra $10 on top of that. So it's really about a $25 difference between these three, between these three strikes. <laughs> 
I can collect the same amount of credit at the 28 range if I go to 2550. Then if I was at $25, 14 days away. And so I'm going to sell a covered call at the 25 strike. That's 21 days away. So that's three weeks from now, which means that if Bank of America falls below 25, I can just go turn around and sell it again. And if it stays at 25, by the time expiration comes around and it gets called away from me, then I've made a couple hundred bucks in profit off of this. So let's go ahead and see what that is. So these midpoints keep changing just a little bit. It's definitely going to get filled at 88. It was at the midpoint of 90 when I started. It's 89 cents. It's only a $2 difference. I don't really care that much. All right, so this was filled at 89 cents. And so I've collected $89 minus probably $1.15 or $1.14 in fees. So that's 87, 85 in, in additional credit collected by selling a covered call. And so my cost basis is 2351 minus 87, 85 is now $2,263.30. So as long as Bank of America stays above 2263, I will always be profitable in this trade. Bank of America is called away from me at the 25 strike, then I will make $236.70 in profit off of the trade in total. If Bank of America is not called away from me at the 25 strike, then I will turn around and I will sell another covered call and continue the strategy. And hopefully by that point, a di another dividend will have come up and I'll be able to collect $18 there. Very, very briefly before I end this video, I want to do a quick update on Tiblio and let you guys know about some things, some changes that they've made to their platform. I made a video about Tiblio previously, if you can check it out. The, the layout of the platform has changed since I last made the video and they have introduced uh, new um, strategies that are available um, for uh, subscribers, um, subscribers to Tiblio. So the first change that they made is that they have their trade board on one tab and they've changed it so that you can see your, your total trades, your, your win rate and your um, total profit and loss here. And, and I still have one Tiblio trade on open in my personal E-Trade account. Theta has been taking, volatility has been taking a long time for options to decay to the point where they're profitable in the range that I want to close them. So this trade is still open um, and that, it's fine. I'm happy to wait it out. They have their credit spreads tab here. Same layout as last time you have an equal amount of puts and calls and they have introduced naked puts. And that is something that I think is really, really cool. And the, when I have the opportunity to, and is hopefully if Bank of America gets called away from me, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to show you um, how to select a naked put from the Tiblio trade board and uh, we can work through it together. And as I also mentioned previously, I have an affiliate link for Tiblio in my description below. If you want to help me out, that would be awesome. You can, if you subscribe using my affiliate link, I will get a percentage of commission, but that does not mean that Tiblio will be much more expensive for you. It will cost the same amount for you as if you do not use my affiliate link. So that is what's planned the next time I can do it. I, I, I can't obviously sell two naked call or two naked puts or another naked put in this position right now. I only have $703 in cash and I don't really want to put myself in a position where I can, I can use this buying power to sell a naked put, but not have enough cash to cover it. And so I'm just not going to do that now. So we're happy to just wait this one out and see what happens right now. It's trading just a couple penny, pennies higher than it had been when I first started this second part of the video. Like I said, if you have any questions, please do let me know. Please drop them in the comments. Please email me. I am available most of the time. I am sometimes delayed in my responses because I do have a day job and I also have my soap business. And so um, a lot of things going on over here, but I am here for you if you have questions. So please, you know, please don't hold back. And as the holidays are coming up, if you want to uh, think about some gift giving ideas, this is a shameless plug for my soap business. It's linked in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Soap's a great gift. Otherwise, I'm happy to have you here. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll be chatting with you soon.